series is called Ideas for Life. And uh, the idea of the series is uh, to bring ideas from uh, Jewish thinkers that um, make us think. <laughs> okay, so uh, today, uh, today Ideas for Life, I would like to uh, bring some uh, lesser known statements of uh, the Vilna Gaon, the Vilna Gaon whose name was Rabbi Eliyahu, the son of Shlomo Zalman, Salman Zalman, who was born in 1720 in uh, Lithuania and died in Vilnius in uh, 1797. So actually this year, 2020, or the Hebrew year Tafshin Pei, is 300 years since his birth. So the Vilna Gaon, of course, is known as a, a scholar and uh, in Bible and uh, rabbinic studies and Kabbalistic studies, in uh, really many, many, um, basically any um, classical Jewish book was something that he was interested in. And we today have 54 uh, books that were from his students because he wrote very little himself, or at least he didn't publish in book form. But uh, when you go through his works, and some of them are quite difficult and some of them are easier, the ones from the students, edited by the students. But I would like to bring some statements that he made, because it's always interesting that sometimes somebody who sits in their house and studies books and seems to have very little interface with the world can surprisingly know a lot about human nature. So I just pulled out a few statements that I would like to uh, uh, read with you. The first one is called, it's about faith. He says, and I translate it into English, a child trusts God completely, and therefore God watches over him greatly. But when that child grows up, he starts to rely on himself or herself, and that God's providence becomes lessened. That's why in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, on top of the Ark of the Covenant, you had these cherubims, which were angels with the faces of children, because they have a special connection to God. I find the statement very interesting. Children have greater divine providence because they believe in God greater than we do. There's a tendency among children to have simple faith. It seems to be almost something of their nature. And as we grow up, we think that the world is based on our decisions and our um, endeavors, which it is to a great extent, but we have to realize that God gives us the ability to do these things and to do these endeavors because you can choose to do something, but you never know what the outcome is going to be. There is always that factor which is not in your hand. So we have to actually build up trust in God and faith in God in order to merit more divine providence in our lives. The second statement is about relationships between human beings. This, uh, the Vilna Gaon writes in his commentary to Mishle, to Proverbs 26.20. He says, There is no evil decree above except when there is discord among people in this world. If people get along, there are no evil decrees from above. It's only when people don't get along that there can be evil decrees from above. He doesn't say why. We could speculate, we could say as a punishment. We can say that maybe this is the nature of things, that every now and then things happen. But if there is unity among people and love among people, so God makes sure these things go around us and don't hit us. But this is what he states as a truism. When there is there's an evil decree above, only when there is discord among humans in this world. That was statement number two. Statement number three about the Jewish people. God hates those who criticize his children even if they be the most holy. This is his also on his commentary on Isaiah 6.6. 6. Hashem yidbarach soneh hamakatragim al banav ve'af hakadoshim. And he proves it from the Midrash 
the Midrash says about Isaiah, when he had this revelation, when he was in the temple, um, when he was in the, the, uh, the temple in uh, chapter 6, and he sees God sitting on his throne and angels, which he calls seraphim, around him. And one of the seraphim, and he says, oh, this, he says, oh, woe to me, because it seems to me that I am uh, impure of the lips, and I am among a people who is impure of the lips. And then it says that one of the angels came and touched his lip with something like a heart, a coal from the, from the altar. And he says, I am taking away your iniquity. And the Midrash and the Talmud says, which iniquity is he referring to? The Talmud says the iniquity is the fact that he was criticizing the Jewish people. It's one thing to criticize yourself. It's another thing to criticize God's people. So Vilna Gaon says that this is a, a truism about rabbinic thinking. God hates those who criticize his children, even if they be the most holy, meaning even if these critics are the most holy people. So that was our third statement. And the third statement has to do with the Jewish people. Statement from number four from the writings of the Vilna Gaon. Where, as I said, we're commemorating 300 years this year since his birth. Again, this is from Mishlei, his commentary on Proverbs 16.6. Uh, 6. It says, more effective, meaning when you want to better yourself and refine yourself as a human being, more effective than all self-deprivation is to study Torah and to do acts of kindness. You see, people think that the best way for a person to get ahead in holiness is to fast, is to stay up all night, is to deprive yourself of sleep, is to live an uncomfortable life. So many have already said that that might have been in the early years. But the Vilna Gaon, and so does his student after him, Chaim Volozhin, say, and his brother, Avraham, in his book, Malata Torah, um, all three agree, would agree with this statement that more effective than all self-deprivation is the study of Torah, meaning to guide you in the right direction and doing acts of kindness, which make you less arrogant, less self-focused, and more altruistic. And that will make you a better person. And uh, another statement uh, this also from his commentary on Proverbs, and I mentioned it in an earlier video when I talked about depression and isolation. This is Proverbs 18.14. The Vilna Gaon says, when one is always happy, even if a disease may threaten them, this happiness will cancel it. There is a great power and joy in happiness. Happiness is a feeling of completion. It's a feeling that I have what I want in life. Even if it's a momentary feeling, it's a feeling that I feel complete. And if you can perpetuate this feeling of completeness, it watches over you, it guards you. Because things enter us, whether our souls or our bodies, because we think we are lacking, because we think we have great needs. But the soul itself is a wellspring of being and becoming. And when we are happy, even our bodies are protected. So when one is always happy, even if a disease threatens them, the happiness will cancel it out. And I spoke about this in a previous video, so I don't want to go in, in, in too much depth at this point. And I'll bring one last statement of the Vilna Gaon, um, which I remember seeing a few years ago. And I think it's also a truism about human beings and um, about a question of authenticity. The statement is, if one runs to do a mitzvah with great excitement, then you should check your motives. Perhaps it's actually a transgression. <laughs> Once more, if one runs to do a mitzvah, a good deed with great excitement, they should check their motives 
perhaps it's actually a transgression. You know, sometimes we run to do things and we masquerade that we are altruistic and we want to give money to a cause because we want to help the children or help the hospital. In the end, we want to see our name in lights on a wall in a newspaper. Or we want to help the neighbor who's having a hard time because we want our friends to say that we give to poor people. Or it could be many, many things. He says, if you really want to do a mitzvah, genuinely, you also have to check why you're doing it. This doesn't mean that if a person does a mitzvah with ulterior motives that it's not a mitzvah. It is. But just don't dupe yourself into thinking that you are the most holy when you are doing this. Because it's a truism of life, and when people do good deeds, yes, sometimes we look for benefits even within the good deeds themselves because that's part of how human beings are. And it doesn't cancel it out. The, um, the Talmud says already, and if a person says, I want to give charity to the poor, but on condition that God gives me a place in the world to come, or on condition that my children live a long life, so the Talmud says, Harezet Sadiq Amor, they're still righteous. Because human beings very often also have ulterior motives, but you also have to do the good deed. Of course, I explain this one a little bit differently. <laughs> the way I explain it is like this the money you gave to Tzedakah, whether you're going to have a, a place in the world to come, you don't know. Whether your children will live a long life, you don't know. So you took the chance you're still a tzaddik. You're still a righteous person. <laughs> you took the chance. It's like the story told of the rabbi of Chelm. There are a lot of these stories about the rabbis of Chelm and, uh, and about um, humorous stories. A story about one man came to the rabbi of Chelm and he saw him, himself on the list of stupid people. He said, Rabbi, why am I on that list? Rabbi said, what do you mean why you're on that list? Wasn't there a fellow who came to town? You met him for the first time and he asked you for 500 rubles? He says, yeah. And you gave it to him. He says, yeah, but he told me he was coming back in a few weeks and he would give me back the money. He says, that's why I put you on the list of stupid people. He says, well, and Rabbi, what would you say if in three weeks he came back and gave me back the money? Rabbi said, not a problem. I'll take off your name, put his name on. Of course, this humorous story is basically to elucidate what I meant about the person who gave the money to charity. They gave the money to charity. It's, it's true they asked for a place in the world to come, whether their children would live, but they don't really know if that's going to happen or not, or not. So they took the risk. And that's why the Talmud says that they're still tzaddikim. <laughs> because we do things as human beings, but the, in the end of the day, the question is, where are we going? So these are the statements I brought you today in the name of the Vilna Gaon. And I think if you have the time even to go over them and think about them, I think it teaches us a lot about human beings in life. Shalom, shalom.